Hello Info person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss something really cool that was discovered, well actually, in our mouse. Something that most of us seem to have and something that's directly produced by bacteria residing in our saliva. But in this case something we've never seen before and something that basically represents a kind of a genetic library that seems to be actually inside the saliva and is used by bacteria for a lot of different things while at the same time also affecting our health. And so today we're going to discuss this study by Kiguchi and the team from Japan that discovers a really bizarre DNA element known as inocle. Or inocle, inocle, um, yeah, we'll come back to the pronunciation once I figure it out. But in order to understand this, let's I guess cover some basics first, because by itself this discovery is quite groundbreaking. And so first, DNA. When we think of our genes or DNA, we think of some kind of an organized blueprint of life contained inside chromosomes. But for a lot of bacteria or for a lot of single cell organisms, DNA in genetic material is actually a lot more fluid and it's not always located inside their own body. And so even though it's still a double-stranded DNA molecule, it's very often a lot more disorganized and in many cases is actually outside of the cell. And so for a typical bacteria, they'll usually house their main genetic material inside a single chromosome that seems to be inside the cell. Here this is in a region referred to as the nucleoid, but they also contain what's known as plasmids or these extra sets of DNA stuff representing much smaller loops that can also leave their body and be shared with other bacteria. And as we learned in the last decade or so, these plasmids seem to be absolutely crucial for bacterial survival. And so if the main chromosome is the instruction manual, mostly responsible for the daily survival, plasmids represent a kind of a specialized toolkit that can also be shared with everyone around them. And that's because they carry genes that are generally not essential, but do provide crucial advantages in certain stressful situations. And so in the last few years, researchers discovered that a lot of these plasmids will usually contain things like protection from, for example, microbiotics, which allow certain bacteria to become sort of like superbugs, immune to a lot of microbiotics. But what's even crazier is that many of these plasmids can also be accepted and shared by other species. So this is not just a single species interaction, this actually applies to a lot of bacteria living in the same environment, which is why I initially refer to this as a library. This is a library for all bacteria trying to survive. But plasmids can be very different. Some plasmids protect bacteria, but some can even introduce new types of metabolism to additional species, or in some cases even kill certain bacteria, implying that they can also serve as a weapon. But crucially, plasmids are technically independent entities. They seem to have their own origin of replication and they can copy themselves separately from the main bacterial chromosome. So actually in some sense you can even think of them as living libraries that don't depend on one specific species but can reproduce inside different species, serving as a kind of a gene repository that goes from one bacterium to another. And so plasmids by themselves are super mysterious but also super cool. And a single bacterium can host many copies of a single plasmid usually numbering in hundreds. And for many different bacterial species, this is actually how they live. They have a system of core chromosomes augmented by mobile plasmids that allow many bacteria to adapt very quickly and even create thriving communities. But at the same time, this is how some bacteria can go from being relatively harmless to suddenly becoming deadly. A lot of these DNA elements may enable some bacteria to transition from being some kind of a harmless resident inside our mouth or inside our gut to suddenly becoming a super dangerous pathogen. Which is why studying plasmids is sort of important. And so in this recent study, drawing on the inspiration from some of the discoveries from the soil, a team of researchers in Japan led by Yuya Ikiguchi set out to find hidden genetic elements that may exist inside humans and specifically inside our mouth. And that's because in soil, researchers discovered that a lot of plasmids grow to ridiculous sizes and can actually produce some really bizarre structures. But in this case, they decided to focus on saliva. And that's because saliva generally contains high diversity of bacteria and will usually differ from person to person. And well, what they found here was a gigantic circular element of DNA that's never been seen before. These chunks were absolutely enormous. They named these chunks inocles. Inocles, inocles, one of those. And this seems to be a completely new family of what's known as ECEs or extra chromosomal elements that are sort of like plasmids but just much 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 more complicated. Once again these are types of DNA molecules that seem to reside outside of the bacterial cell. But interestingly one question here is 
why is this the first time we've ever seen these? Well, it turns out that this is because of the sequencing methods. Normally, the standard DNA sequencing method breaks down genetic material into really small fragments, making it much easier to analyze. And so for tiny plasmids, this may work. But if you're looking for something larger, specifically something in hundreds of thousands of kilobases in length, this will just not work because it's going to break them down into much smaller segments, fragmenting this whole structure and making it impossible to piece back together. And so here this was the result of new technology. Scientists use what's known as advanced long-read sequencing technology that's able to capture much longer stretches of DNA without breaking it apart. And on top of this, the other issue is that, typically in your saliva, approximately 85-95% to of all DNA comes from you. And so here they had to develop a technique in order to isolate bacterial DNA, removing most of the human DNA in the process. And so then by using 476 samples, they discovered that 76% of all of them seem to contain these really strange structures. They all seem to contain these enoclees. In the process also discovering that the host for at least one of them was a very common bacterium known as Streptococcus salivarius. These little guys that pretty much most of us seem to have in our saliva and in our upper throats. And it looks like pretty much most of the bacteria in our mouths were sharing these enormous structures at all times. But despite successfully discovering them, their biological role is still unknown. Only 5% of genes have been identified and 95% remain elusive. But the initial findings seem to point toward very critical functions related to survival. Here the bacteria use these structures for various interactions with human body, specifically in adapting and protecting themselves from various inhospitable conditions in our mouths and in our guts. So things like acid, for example, or various acidic foods we might eat. And specifically, a series of genes that was discovered inside of this seems to handle intracellular stress, specifically damage caused by oxidative stress or DNA damage. And so the fact that these structures are so massive is probably because a lot of these bacteria just need a lot of extra DNA to survive inside our mouths, as these are not particularly hospitable conditions and conditions inside our mouths may change instantly at all times. I mean, for example, if you drink hot coffee or something, suddenly the bacteria has to adapt to these very hot conditions and very acidic conditions that were not there a minute before. And so by encountering these daily changes, a lot of these bacteria adapted by creating this massive library of genes. But they also seem to contain genes involved in cell wall biosynthesis and modification. And this is a really important discovery because normally a bacterial cell wall determines how bacteria interact with various surfaces and various cells around them, and specifically with these skin cells inside our mouths. And so in some sense, a lot of these extra genes seem to modify the bacterial response to how they interact with our body. And this is really strange because here, researchers found this very strange correlation. Correlation in regards to human health. The abundance of these enoclease showed a significant positive correlation with certain immune cells. And even with proteins detected in the blood, responsible for microbial infection. But the most compelling discovery so far seems to relate to diseases, or specifically patients undergoing certain treatments, that have also been used in this study. So, for example, patients with certain types of cancers, and especially the head, neck, and colorectal cancers, were surprisingly found to have a reduction of enoclease compared to other groups which surprisingly implies that enoclees might be useful as a kind of a biomarker for certain diseases, while also suggesting that in many cases having more of these enoclees potentially benefits human health, most likely because it allows bacteria to adapt and to protect our body. But obviously right now this is a bit speculative. We don't really know exactly what these structures are for yet, but they do seem to have a direct relationship between the host and the host health and the bacteria. As a matter of fact, by living inside our mouths, these bacteria seem to always acquire these bizarre structures. Because here, when they took out these bacteria and tried to raise them outside of our mouths, specifically inside the agar plates, all of these elements were completely lost and the bacteria evolved completely differently. And so this is maybe something the bacteria evolved to survive inside us. Which also reinforces a core concept in modern bacteriology. The immense role of this mobile DNA in bacterial evolution which has now been also linked to human health. Now we know that small plasmids often carry critical traits like antibiotic resistance and can easily be transferred between bacteria, but the existence of these gigantic enoclees is a completely new type of a discovery. Here this doesn't just provide a little bit of influence, it seems to create these massive libraries related to the host interaction 
and provide necessary stress tolerance for any bacteria living inside the mouth. Representing a significant expansion of various survival strategies bacteria use for a lot of different environments. But this also of course represents an important discovery for medicine. This could be a new target for medical fields or at least be used as a kind of a diagnosis. As a matter of fact, inocles seem to help beneficial bacteria survive, which then prevent various problems and diseases. But obviously they might also do the opposite, it's just we don't really know much about them yet. But here, on a second thought, imagine how much of the stuff we also share when we interact with one another. For example, kissing or even sharing a drink can easily transfer entire bacterial strains from one person to another and thus transfer all of these inocles as well. And so with just one single kiss, we might share an entire bacterial library from one person to another. And because many of these genetic tools are highly transferable, and because many bacteria use the process of horizontal gene transfer, this means that once again that one single kiss can completely transform the bacteria inside of you. Especially because the horizontal transfer usually happens very efficiently on various solid surfaces, for example, your teeth. But at the same time, this type of an exchange is probably also crucial because a lot of these inocles include very important genes that some of the bacteria might not possess. As a matter of fact, it actually boosts the adaptive capacity for the host bacteria and introduces new types of stress tolerance that might protect the bacteria that could then protect our bodies. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that maybe sharing our drinks and kissing is kind of good for us. But uh, not a medical doctor, so you know, do your own research. Either way though, this research is still kind of groundbreaking. Despite decades of research on the bacterial plasmids, the complexity of the microbial world within us is still profoundly underestimated. As a matter of fact, in just the last few years, we've covered a lot of bizarre topics about bacteria inside of us that actually even shocked me after reading some of these studies. Some of these videos should be in the description below. But moving forward, now researchers face a new challenging task. Figuring out what 95% of all of these genes seem to do. What exactly is the structure for? And what else can it do to bacteria? And also, why is it that only 76% of people seem to contain them? Or is it just that the other people contain something even more massive that was not detected? But what is clear is that these DNA fragments seem to be a very powerful force driving the adaptive capacity for a lot of microbes inside our mouths, while also having some kind of an effect that we still don't understand on our condition and our health. So this is not just some kind of a microbiological curiosity, this is a very important piece of puzzle connecting microbes inside of us with our well-being. Which means that we'll definitely come back and discuss this more in some of the future studies once we discover more about this super strange structure. Until then, and until I guess I learn how to pronounce it, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. Additionally, you can also buy the wonderful present t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.